This video has been on the back burner for a while, but honestly, it was so worth it. Today, we're taking a look at this Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon I actually didn't buy. No, a viewer reached out to me to take a look at the ThinkPad, which supposedly had a faulty screen. Thankfully, he provided some pictures which indicated it to be an X1 Carbon Gen 2. You know, the ones with the touch bar and questionable design choices? Anyways, I thought, why not? Surely, it wouldn't be too hard to repair. Coincidentally, he lived quite close to me, so we arranged to meet up. Thank you, Jack, for providing this ThinkPad. This video wouldn't be possible without you. With all of that said, let's go get this bad boy and see what's up. Ah, oh, you gotta love the British weather. So here we have the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 2 and to be honest it looks like it's in pretty good condition as well. What's that June 2014? Not many scratches on the back to be honest which is quite a good sign. I mean we did see some of the pictures beforehand. Palm rest and keyboard looks pretty good as well and also the trackpad. I mean well, this is quite controversial but a lot of people don't like these trackpads but I actually don't mind them. And of course you have the touchpad which has yellowed over the years. I mean, take a look at that. Other than that, it looks in pretty good condition. All right, let's take this to base and take a better look at it and see if we can fix it. There you go. So the ThinkPad we're taking a look at is the X1 Carbon Gen 2. Released in 2014, they were meant for high class ultra portable use, they bolstered fast dual core CPUs and aimed to tackle the rise of MacBooks and other premium ultrabooks. A quick look on the Wayback Machine reveals them to start around £900 to the upper thousands, so by no means was this a cheap laptop. If you know anything about the X1 Carbon Gen 2, then you've probably seen the infamous touch bar. Why do I say that? Well, over time, these would start to yellow and absorb moisture, making the icons barely legible. A cool implementation at the time preceded the MacBook Touch Bar by two years in fact, but perhaps an oversight. Still makes this one of the more unique ThinkPads as they scrapped its design in the following year. Another thing they scrapped was the touchpad. My personal take, I actually don't mind them. Yes, they lose the physical buttons, but as a touchpad, it wasn't that bad. They were prevalent in the X240s slash T440s. Another design flaw they introduced was this one, but we'll explore that later in the video. Anyways, let's take a better look at this faulty ThinkPad and see if we can spring it back to life. Now before we get started, a big thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Now you might have noticed I changed my desk recently. Well, no, it's just a slab of wood. Luckily, FlexiSpot reached out to me to showcase their E7 standing desk. With brilliant ergonomics and a range of add-ons, surely it takes all the boxes. Let's take a look, shall we? Starting off, here we have the tabletop. I chose the bamboo colour which I think complements well with the white frame. Now, it's imperative that the surface you work on has a great feel and lasting durability. FlexiSpot offers bamboo wood tabletops which offer twice the durability and elasticity of ordinary wood, perfect for years to come. They also come finished in a water resistance 2H lacquer to prevent moisture and scratches, just in case you've got a couple screws laying around. The standing out feature is the ability to change heights from 58 to 123 centimeters. You can save up to four presets of whatever height suits your needs. The legs are made of a high quality carbon steel, able to withstand 125 kilograms of force. With it comes complete with a cable management rack to allow for a more presentable setup. It's also very smart with an auto off screen and anti collision system. You can also customize your desk with a plethora of accessories to further boost productivity. Here I have the F60 monitor arm capable of holding two 30 inch monitors. A monitor arm is a must have to allow for more desk space when working and tinkering with various orientations and angles. For storage needs, an attachable under desk drawer can be installed to neatly store various objects you may have laying around. With a seven year warranty for peace of mind, you can be sure it stands the test of time. Quite the substantial package for all things considered. For more information, check out the links in the video description. Thank you FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Now where were we? Oh yeah, the ThinkPad. After a couple of minutes of testing it plugged into a monitor, it showed no signs of life. 
This only occurred after I took out the charger and put it back in. Seems like quite a common issue with these X1 carbons just flat out dying. And yes, I did try to reset it and clear the CMOS but to no avail. Annoyingly, I actually have no footage of it actually working, but what I can confirm was it went into the BIOS and booted into Ubuntu. Anyways, after hours of troubleshooting, I gave up and bought a replacement ThinkPad with a working motherboard but faulty screen. This may seem silly at first, but as long as I can use the motherboard and sell off the other parts, I should break even. Also, can't forget about the display. Found one which was actually a 1440p QHD touchscreen. So, quite the nice upgrade and something I did not expect to see with these ThinkPads. Let's wait for all the parts to arrive. I didn't mention, the screen came all the way from Lithuania, so it took a week to arrive. Finally, let's unbox these parts and see what's up. Firstly, the screen. Came in a pretty compact box with tons of bubble wrap. I was worried that given it came from mainland Europe, it didn't survive shipping, but looks good so far. And of course, the replacement X1 carbon. Taking it apart, I was happy to see that it came in an inflated sleeve, arguably the best way to ship a laptop. And on first inspection, it looked completely identical to the other X1 carbon, but instead had what appeared to be a Norwegian keyboard. Let's start with disassembling the original X1 carbon and see what's causing this issue. Taking it apart was no headache. Just a few cap screws on the base and with some confidence it gave way. First thing that struck me was the motherboard, possibly one of the smallest I've seen on a laptop. Taking out the SSD first, then the battery. Next is the heatsink. How dry is the thermal paste? A few screws later we can see the X1 Carbon's thermal solution. Actually not that bad with thick copper heat pipes. Also a first look at the i7-4600U, you were once so powerful. Next on the agenda is the motherboard, with a few screws and ribbon cables later, it's finally out. Let's try to find the issue. Well, if we can that is, as the motherboard looks completely fine. And of course, take off the display as it's most likely dead. Let's leave all of that aside and turn on the replacement. A quick boot up reveals it to work just fine, but the display was completely blank. The backlight was working so we can rule out any backlight fuse issues, I hooked it up to a monitor and got no display, so I was just hoping it was configured to ThinkPad LCD in the BIOS. Anyways, let's also disassemble this ThinkPad. One pleasant surprise was it actually came with an SSD, even though the listing clearly mentioned no boot device. Even has a no SSD sticker on the ThinkPad, which got me speculating whether the seller thoroughly checked this. At this point in the video, I just wanted the ThinkPad to work, so the plan was to transfer the new the board into the old ThinkPad and hook up the new screen. Let's get that done shall we? I guess you can call the disassembly a massive success. All that's left to do is going to the BIOS. Hmm, I think I spoke too soon. If you're not aware, Computrace is a third party software usually loaded onto company laptops to prevent people from stealing it or doing other nefarious things on them, and it looks like the previous owner forgot to disable it. Now, I wouldn't recommend ever buying a Computrace loaded device as they can track your IP and whatnot, but if there's no BIOS password present, then it can be fixed. Maybe. All I need to do is go into Windows, let it connect to the internet and the ThinkPad should call home and disable Computrace if it confirms the laptop isn't enrolled to any company. So let's try that and see if we can get rid of it. First step is to install Windows 10. The installation is nothing special. You've probably seen it a million times already, so I'll just skip to when we're in Windows 10. Okay, so we're finally in Windows 10. So there is that little mark on the bottom corner, as was described in the listing for the screen. But other than that, it looks like it's functioning. Okay, let me go in Task Manager. More details, performance. So we currently have an i7-4600U 
We have 8 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz. We have a Toshiba M.2 128 gig SSD. We've got Wi Fi AC. And we've got Intel HD graphics. You know how much I love them. Okay, let's run a few tests on the X1 Carbon and see how good it is. The touchscreen does in fact work. Look at that. Okay, wow. so so we can go into settings. And to be honest, it is running quite smooth. Looks like everything's working. So I guess you can say this is a success, but that compute trace is going to be an issue. So we'll obviously need to find a way to get rid of that because you don't really want compute trace on your laptop because you can get companies tracking your information or whatever. And let's be honest, no one wants that. So obviously we'll try and get rid of that and wrap this video up. So the first thing that I've noticed is there's no third party apps on the ThinkPad. That's the first thing that I would have noticed if it was hooked up to a company. And as you can see here, it's just your standard Microsoft bloatware. But other than that, I mean, it looks like a clean install of Windows. So let's go into the BIOS and check if Compute Trace is disabled. So the ThinkPad has been running for a while. Let's go into the BIOS and see if Compute Trace is actually disabled. So let me just turn it on and go into the BIOS. Okay, press enter, F1. And hopefully we won't see that error message. And look at that. Okay, so Compute Trace is actually gone. Okay, let me go into security just to confirm. Anti theft, Compute Trace, and look at that. Compute Trace module activation enabled, not activated, but the thing that's different is it's not grayed out. So we can actually change the setting. And thankfully, this ThinkPad doesn't have a BIOS password, so we can actually change it from enabled to disabled. So let's just do that real quick. Okay, press F10, save, and go into Windows and do the rest of the testing. So far, so good. Let me download some drivers and some apps and do some testing on the ThinkPad and see how good it is. One thing I wanted to test was the battery. Given the ThinkPad is a decade old, how's it keeping up? Actually, not that bad. After 10 years, we're at 475 cycles with around 70% battery health. Much better than I expected. So the first test that we have here is Cinebench R23. Let's see how that 10 year old i7 does in 2024. So let's just start it and see what score we get. I didn't realize it then, but I actually tested the CPU in my T440S video. Go check it out if you haven't already. Anyways, I was expecting the i7-4600U to do okay. Nothing spectacular, but given we're working with two cores and four threads, what more can you expect? Okay, so we got a score of 1188 which, to be honest, isn't that bad. I mean, I was expecting somewhere in the 800s or 900s. So to get a score above 1,000 is pretty good. Now, let's test the graphical side of the X1 Carbon and see how that does. Here we have Heaven Benchmark running on the X1 Carbon Gen 2. Let's see how the graphics really are. Now, on first glance, we're currently getting around 3 FPS, so I'm not really expecting a good score, but who knows, things might change. So let's start the benchmark and see what score we get. Okay, my cursor is literally not showing up, which is a great sign. Okay, there it is. Let's start the benchmark and see what score we get. Ah, it felt like I was watching a stop motion animation waiting for this to be done. Truly a sight to behold. It's a miracle the testing didn't crash. I already knew the score was going to be bad, but to what extent, I had no clue. <laughs> okay, so... We got an average FPS of 3.6, I'm saying that right, 3.6, and a score of 91. Now, I don't know about you, but that might be the lowest score I've ever seen. Granted, we are running this at 1440p, if you didn't know. The screen that we did put in this is a 1440p QHD panel, but 3.6, that's kind of mental, honestly. So the whole point of this wasn't to see how good of a score we could get. It's merely just to stress test the GPU in the X1 Carbon and see how stable it is. And so far, so good. We've not encountered any crashes thus far, and I'll take that as a win. Here we have the X1 Carbon running on Minecraft Java 1.21, and this is where you can see its age. So currently we're getting around 39, 30 FPS, 11 FPS, and there are some wild dips when playing. I mean, if I'm flying around, for example, so we get around, what's that, 13, 14 barely above 30 i mean you really wouldn't want to play minecraft or any other game on the excellent carbon gen 2 it really shows its age doesn't it i mean this was i think made in 2014 so 
yeah, look at that. One one FPS, it's basically unusable. I mean, if you want to play games on it, you can. I guess Minesweeper would be an option, but Minecraft and any other like graphically demanding or CPU demanding games, I'd honestly stray away. Now let's test to see how usable the ThinkPad really is. Opening apps was not an issue, though the 8GB of RAM was holding it back a tad. Browsing the web was flawless. Web pages loaded up fast with not many hiccups to account of. Let's talk about the keyboard. I did mention before some of the weird design choices they went with the keyboard, the first one being the backspace plus delete combo. Quite strange. Even while testing, I hit the delete key by mistake a few times. The home slash end buttons. From what I know, these were meant for Windows 8, which was succeeded with Windows 10 a year later, so kinda useless, and arguably the worst one, having to double tap shift to access caps lock. Like come on, what were they thinking? Thankfully all of these small but significant features were dropped the next year, but overall the keyboard was great to type on just like any other keyboard. The QHD touchscreen I installed is honestly night and day compared to the HDTN panel that was previously in it, an upgrade well spent. The speaker's sound. as they should, with enough bass to blow your ears off. One last thing I wanted to do is install the old SSD that originally came with it. It came with a copy of Ubuntu and as this ThinkPad is getting in on age, I thought would it not make a great pairing. So let's pop off the back panel, take out the old and in with the new. It's also doubled capacity which is good. I boot up into Ubuntu when as you'd expect and honestly it felt quite nice to use. Sometimes Windows does feel quite cluttered. I guess I'll stick to Ubuntu for now and maybe experiment with other distros in the near future. I guess we'll leave it here. Somehow we revitalized a once broken ThinkPad into a fully functioning device. Maybe I shouldn't jinx it. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was great fun to make and hopefully you stick around to see more. Make sure to like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment on what you thought about the X1 Carbon Gen 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.